Hello, my little artists. We are starting the month of March. And in the month of March, you know what that means, St. Patrick's Day and all the fun things that come with that. So if you haven't had a chance to look on our um, class website, you will see that we have all kinds of fun art projects from leprechauns to rainbows to uh, clovers and all kinds of fun things in between. So today we are gonna draw a rainbow and um, the landscape that goes around it. So it's gonna be really fun. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen with you to show you what supplies you're going to need. So you can see here, you're gonna need paper, um, an eraser, pencil, Sharpie, and the colors, the rainbow. Okay, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, so make sure you get out those colors and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'll give you just one minute um, to go ahead and grab those things that you need. And um, I will get ready to, all right, so let me go ahead, share my screen with you. Okay, so what we're going to do is just all right. There we go. Just getting all my things sorted out here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take away the things we don't need. So right now we don't need our crayons, our eraser, or whatever. We just need our pencil and our paper. So you're gonna go ahead and turn your paper landscape okay which is a long way across like this and we're going to start somewhere about a third of the way up of your paper so the center is about here right so this is the middle across the page we're going to go down a little bit lower than that and we're going to draw a line that goes across just like that okay so this is going to be um, the ground the background it's going to be the ground and that's where we're going to start our rainbow now I'd say the hardest part of this whole project is probably drawing the rainbow itself. So just hang in there and you know, don't give up. Your lines don't have to be perfect. The rainbow isn't perfectly symmetrical, which means it's you know, exactly the same. So we're just gonna take our time and go slow. Okay, so we've got our base down here. So now from that base, we're gonna draw um, the bands in the rainbow. So I'm gonna start out down here at the bottom. I'm going to start out by making a great big one that goes across like that, okay, just like that. And so now we're going to need to do, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bars, but eight all together. So let's do one and kind of make them, give them a little space, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. I think I have to do the more because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So all together, you should have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. Okay. So now, after you've done that, you can go back in and adjust. So, like this one's a little bit thicker. So, I'm going to move those in just a tiny bit. So, this is the time you make any of your adjustments to any of your lines. Okay. So, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So, you've got your base down here and you're drawing eight of these bars that go across to the side of the paper like that, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So keep going until you have eight of them all together, okay? All right, so now after this, if you're still drawing your um, bands in the rainbow, then you can just push pause until you get them all done. Okay, so now that we've done all the bands, we're gonna go ahead and put some um, bushes and shrubs in the background. So we're just making these bumpy lines, which are upside down letter U's. That's what they look like, right? And like that. And then a few over here like that, okay? So pretty easy. So these are in our background, right? So now we're gonna add some things like flowers down here at the bottom. So there's different kinds of flowers we could do. Um, I always start with a circle. 
And then I do the petals, just kind of like upside down leather U's, just like that. So there's one flower. And then maybe we do like a tulip, which is an upside down letter U, except the sides go out kind of like that. And you come in, and you come in like that. And then you go up, and then up. And that's how you make the tulip, okay? So I'm gonna draw some lines down like that. Leaves. And then tulips have these great big leaves that go up like that, up and down like that. And let's see, let me think of a different kind of flower I could do. So I could do one with a little dot in the center and then make leaves like this around it, upside down my leaves all the way around. But um, I could do, let's see. I could do a daffodil. So their leaves kind of go like that. Have a point to them. Like that. that one like that. Yes, please. Let me just let you go. Let's see if I can get that little small and squeeze. Please, please, like that. There we go. And put some leaves on that. The leaves, you guys know how to make those, right? A line that goes up, a line across, and then through the middle. Um, we could do another tulip. So then a tulip goes down like that. You make that side go down and match. And then together, together, up and down. So this is a little bit different looking to it. And then tulips have great big leaves. That. And then maybe just one more over here. So I'm going to make a big center with little leaves on the outside. Like that. Okay. So, whatever kind of leaves you want, petals or uh, flowers you want to do, you could do like all, you know, the same kind. It doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you. Okay, and then um, if you're still drying your flowers, this is a good time to press pause, and then you can um, come back and join me once you caught up with drying all of your flowers. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit to our sky, to our background, and those clouds are generally very, very big and huge, but they're so far up in the sky. So we're going to give them the perspective of being far away, so they're going to be the rainbows going to be much bigger, and these clouds are far away. And then down here, I'm going to draw some clouds kind of going behind the rainbow. So like that. And you can make like fluffy clouds all the way around fluffy, but I just made mine like this today. And then I'm going to draw a little butterfly. So I'm going to give it a little body like that. Okay. And then two antennas. Like that. And then a bump. And then a small bump on the bottom. And then a big bump and a small bump on the bottom. So they're really like, almost like letter U's. And then I think I put a dot on each of the ones. Okay. So pretty much there you have it, um, our picture. So the only thing we need to do now is do our Sharpie lines. Now, I know that you're probably still working. So just go ahead and press pause until you're all caught up with your drawing, okay? All right, so now that you're all caught up with your drawing, um, I'm using a piece of scratch paper underneath, like I always do. And then I'm gonna go over all my pencil lines um, with my Sharpie. So we've done actually the hard part. So this is the easier part of the whole project, really. Um, drawing is always the hardest. So once you have your lines down, then you're good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to go over and trace all of my lines. Now, keep in mind that um, if you get off your pencil lines, it's okay because um, we're going to erase those pencil lines anyway. So, no big deal. Another reason I like to use a piece of paper behind is, um, especially when using Sharpie. It's really easy to get off the page. Um, and Sharpie is a really hard permanent marker. It's hard to get off of things. 
So I really like to protect the table when I can by using um, my scratch paper. I always use the same one so I don't waste. You don't need a fresh piece of scratch paper each time. You can use the same paper from previous projects because it's a scratch piece of paper. So I'm just going over my rainbow band. Okay. And you know, you notice I'm getting off my lines. It's going to happen. And that's okay. Bound to happen. It's really hard to stay perfectly on the lines. So, I mean, I'm an adult and I've been drawing for a long time. So, even like for kids, it's even that much harder, right? And honestly, if you look at a rainbow, they're not perfect either. Neither should they be because your work of art is going to be super unique. And no one's going to make a piece of art just like yours. And so that's what makes it special. If we all did everything the same way, I mean, how boring would that be? Can you only imagine? Like we only had one way to draw a flower or one way to color or one way to paint. How boring would life be, right? Okay, so I'm just tracing my flowers now. Mm -hmm. Not the lines, which remember it's totally okay. I'm gonna cut it there. So just keep going. And anytime you feel like you're getting too far behind. You can always um, push pause on the video so that you can catch up. Okay. It's one of the cool things about the recorded lessons. You can make it go as fast or as slow as you want it to be. So I'm going to cut it here to the slider too. Okay. So I know that you are probably still working on your sharpie lines and drawing, maybe too. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to erase all of my pencil lines. So if you are still working on doing your Sharpie, this is a great time to pause and I'll go ahead and do your Sharpie lines and go ahead and get all your erasing done, okay? All right, so I'm going to just go in over my Sharpie lines like we always do. And I'm going to erase all my pencil lines. So because we don't need them anymore. As I always say, the pencil lines are actually a guide. And once we get our Sharpie lines, the Sharpie lines are actually the lines that matter. And once we get those down, then we're good to go. So. Okay. So we don't need them anymore. So I'm just going to go over and then those things. So, I'm going to go ahead. My little eraser boogers goes all the way. Okay, bring off my work surface. All right. So, there we have it. So, now, um, you know, let's start with the first hand of the window. And of course, you know what color is the first color in the rainbow, you know? Red, right? Okay. So we're going to start with red. Let's go ahead and color that in nice and dark. And so this is a great picture to start us off for the month of March. And also um, in the month of March, um, I think it's March 21st, 22nd, I can't remember, um, is when the first day of spring. So spring is coming too. 
my daughter's birthday is on March 1st. So depending on here, sometimes she's a she's born near the first day of spring. So. All right, so we're just gonna keep going all the way around. Oops, like that. Okay, and then just go ahead and carry in our first one. Now make sure you take your time. Okay, try to do neat work. All right, so what's the next color in the rainbow after red? Orange, right? Okay. So I've got my bright orange here. And do you guys know what two things you need for there to be a rainbow? There needs to be rain, of course. It's called the rainbow, right? Rain and sunlight. So on days where it's raining and the sun's kind of peeking out, you will definitely need to check the skies. Because somewhere near you is a rainbow. And sometimes you can see the double rainbow. So that's kind of neat too. So I'm just keeping in the middle of things. And this right yellow is the third color in the rainbow. So be thinking about what's the next color. It comes after the yellow. There's always a trick to remembering the order of the colors of the rainbow. It's called Roy G. The R O Y. G B I E. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and purple. So indigo is kind of a mixture between blue and purple, but normally in our rainbows, we just do, we don't put the indigo in there, we just do the blue purple. Okay, so the next color is green, of course. Mm -hmm. I just love rainbows. So pretty. So pretty. In my classroom, actually, um, my kindergarten classroom for this year, although we haven't been in the building yet, um, is rainbow themed. So, like everything in my room is rainbow, even the decorations are rainbow themed. So, even if you're not in my kindergarten classroom, you should come by when school's open and take a peek. At my rainbow room in room 10. So that's Mrs. R's um, kindergarten classroom is in room 10. It's right above the door. So you know it's room 10. You can come take a peek. Okay, so our next color. Anybody know? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. It looks like we're going to have room for indigo. So maybe we'll find an in between color to put in. So let's go this one. Looks like we have enough lines where we can include indigo to the Perfect. So our rainbow will actually be correct. Okay, so now I need to find some of the bluish purple in between. Okay, I think this one. Not quite, but it'll work. It's not quite indigo, it's a little bit too purple. But that's okay. You guys get the idea. Indigo would actually be a little bit more blue. Okay, and then we've got our deep. Actually, you know what I can do? So I can put some blue in here like that. And then we go over it with the blue and put some, put a little bit more blue in it. That one. There we go. Problem solving, right? 
This individual actually has a good feelings. So there we go. And then I've got the papers. Yeah, we problem solved. And you could do the same. You could hold a lighter purple and then put some of the blue in it, and that would do the trick. Okay, so there's that. Now, if you're still planning your rainbow, you're, you're totally fine because um, a lot of these other colors will kind of be up to you how you want to color them. Uh, I'm gonna color my shrubs here in the background a different color than my grass because I want them to have um, you know, a little difference between them. I don't want them to be um, exactly the same. I want them to contrast a little bit. So contrast means to not blend together. Okay? Like if you were to do black and white, that's a definite contrast because they're so different from each other. This one would be a light contrast. Okay, so let's keep going. And okay, so then on my grass, I'm going to do a contrasting color, which this is going to be a very light contrast though, but it's a dark green. And you can see how um, if I made the shrugs green, it, they wouldn't stand out as much, but if you use um, a darker green against it, it really looks nice and makes that color pop. So again, I have my scratch paper underneath here. Uh, so I kind of keep it from um, getting on the table. Now I'm gonna also color the leaves a different color because again, I don't want them to blend into the grass and I want the colors to pop. So I'm just gonna color around the leaves right now and then find a shade of green I like for the leaves. So I'm just coming around that right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna go for what I'm going around here so I don't get the using flower colors. Green, because we don't want that. Okay. And then that. It's coming along. So you can definitely see the foreground and the background. So these are in the foreground and these things are in the background. Um, so depending on the size, you can tell if it's far away or close up. Okay. So. You know, during the month of September, we talked a lot about St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is a fun holiday. Um, a lot of books, she teaches probably read a lot of books about leprechauns and um, that there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, a leprechaun's pot of gold, and you can catch their pot of gold or you can catch their gold with like, good wishes and all these things, kind of fun stories. Uh, in our kindergarten class, we normally in March um, make leprechaun traps and have a St. Patrick's Day party to see if we could find the leprechauns to come So, kind of fun. Okay. Okay, so there's that. And then let's see, I need to color my um, butterfly. So I need to color, let's see, the orange. Orange is a nice bright color. And then I can do, maybe I'll do the dots, something that will really stand out. Let's do, how about this one? And then I think I'm going to do the body. Yeah. Okay, now I need to decide what color I want to make my flowers. I think I'm actually going to do the pattern of the rainbow. 
So I'm gonna do red. And then orange. And then yellow. And then I'll come back and color the centers later. Now I'm not gonna use green because or I'm not gonna use blue either. I'm gonna use these shades of purple though. Because I've really never seen a green flower, have you? Although I guess there's some hydrangeas that help um, a kind of a greenish white color and stuff. No, I'm gonna stick with the bright colors. And then I think I'll come back and do this other tulip in red. Because I love red tulips. They're so beautiful. Red and yellow. Okay, now I need to decide what color I'm going to use for my petals. I think I'll use this bright, kind of a lighter green. Contrast against the glass green. And then I think I'm going to go in and I'm going to pour, let's see, I'm going to do some of the centers in yellow. That's just a nice bright color. And then come back and do maybe red. Centers, it's kind of fun. It looks nice and bright. So the last thing I have to do is color my sky. And then I color around the clouds because I'm going to leave those white. So I'm just going to come in. Color the sky background. You can use any shade of blue you want. Um, you can use a light, dark. So here. Okay, so there's that part. And then I've got this part. So I'm going to pull up my scratch paper so I don't get my table all blue. Let's do the edge here. And on this little corner. This is just a bright, I'm turning my paper side, but it's just a bright cheery picture. And you could put this as part of your spring collection of pictures starting in March. Um, you could have a special place to hang up your art and pull it to your art gallery. Say, hey, mom or dad, can I have a little space on the wall and put an art gallery up? You could just take some string and you could even use, like at the Dollar Tree, they have um, these little pinch like clothesline hooks. You can get a whole bunch of them for like a dollar and then put some string or ribbon or something up, hang them on the wall and then put those little clips on it. And then you can clip up all your artwork. It's a really inexpensive, fun way to show off all of your art. You can call it your art gallery. Might be fun. So when people come over, if you have it in your room, you'd say, Do you want to come see my art gallery? I have an art gallery. And you can hang it all your art. You could do it by month, you could do it by season. I just think that would be kind of cool. People love to see all the projects you've done and all the artwork you've created. Um, this is our art class, just so fun. Just some fun ways to display your art instead of you know putting it in your desk or tossing it out or just putting it somewhere and forgetting about it is to hang it up. So you can make your own little art gallery, you know, just buy some clips at the Dollar Tree and I'm sure your mom and dad have some ribbon or string around the house and make an art gallery. Okay, so I know that you're probably still coloring feverishly on yours. Um, but this is what my finished product looks like. So I've got my rainbows, we've included the indigo, flowers in the bottom, and this great big field with the clouds in the background, the shrubs in the background, everything in the background, and then we've got these beautiful flowers in the foreground. So obviously rainbows are huge. So um, the flowers aren't going to be, you know, as the size of the rainbow, as big as the rainbow. So these are much closer up as well as the butterfly and these are in the background. Mm -hmm. So if you're still working on your picture, great. Um, again, you don't need to worry because the sky is blue and you can do that whatever shade you want, pull your flowers, whatever color you want. The hardest part really was the drawing part. So, all right. So I hope you guys had fun today drawing with Mrs. R. I had fun with you drawing our rainbow and starting um, doing our spring pictures. 
we're kind of done with the winter um, themed pictures. Now we're going to start doing springy um, things with flowers and this month, especially with clovers and leprechauns. And then the following months, lots of things about beaches and flowers and just fun things for spring. So I hope you had a great day doing art with me. I look forward to seeing you very soon and I hope you all have a great day.